again. Uh, thank you for being here. This is really exciting. I know if you're anything like me, this camp has been fantastic so far. So uh, with that, I want to introduce us and tell you a little bit about IPFS and how we love community and community loves you. And uh, particularly, I think we'll talk a little bit about ProtoSchool, which is a really exciting development here that we can utilize as a community. And more generally, is thinking about how do you foster and do well in the community. So we'll talk about that. So you want to uh, go to the next one? So I, you know me. I'm Dan. We also have Kevin. Kevin. This is fun. So uh, in, we each run a different chapter of ProtoSchool and each organize a different uh, uh, community for IPFS in our local areas. Um, so obviously, of course, local, uh, interplanetary, soon to be, right? So, cool. So with that, like, thinking about community in general, like, why do you want to steward, especially in a technical community, like, a, a something more than just this, right? <laughs> Where I know we can be in isolation just programming and thinking through things, but that, that really only lasts so long. We're, we're social creatures, right? So what we really need is face-to-face -face interaction. You know, look, this is, you know, uh, some of the development workshop last year, and now we're here at IPFS camp, right? Like, it's healthy and energizing, and it gets everybody moving and accelerates the stuff that we do individually when we come together and celebrate some of that stuff. So really, why do we want to do this as well? I think it's all about the intrinsic stuff, especially in open source, right? It's about we want to see something happen, and together we can do it better. So really, that's, that's why we're here. So, and then beyond just that, like, what's community about? Is why would you actually want to, to devote your time and energy to organizing and leading this thing? And I know for me personally, opportunities and motivation is really what drives me is that this responsibility this kind of like thing that i'm putting on me uh it's like homework for me it's putting these milestones that i have to achieve so it helps incentivize me to do what i really want to help us achieve and as well as professional development if you want to lead one of these groups like it really uh enables you to do some cool stuff i mean like Example, you know, I, I get to be here because of some of the work that I've been invited to do, which is awesome, you know? So you get to be the front line of basically when people hear about whatever your community is, and IPFS in this case, um, they come to you first, and you get to help connect people to that. So that's pretty awesome. So if this kind of inspires you, if you like IPFS, but you also want to help really uh, evangelize for IPFS and bring us all together, how can you do it? Really, it's uh, first things first, I think, is, is doing some investigation, right? You want to figure out who else is here. You know, it could just be you, maybe, but that's okay. It, it's, it's a good place to start. Uh, if there are other people, though, I think we all work better together. So find them, identify them, reach out, and ask if you can be collaborative. And it doesn't have to be IPFS specifically or whatever community you're talking about. It's related groups. Like for instance, I run a lot of Ethereum groups in the area. So blockchain and stuff is close enough related. There's a lot of overlap between the people who are interested in distributed systems as well. So that, that tapping into that resource is important. So start thinking about that. And with all this stuff, uh, it's, I like to kind of ready aim fire, but really the ready aim when we're talking about doing this investigation should be small. Just try something. Throw something out there. If you're an organizer, um, it, trying not to get stuck up in the planning of it too much and just see what happens. I think it's, uh, it doesn't have to be anything formal to begin with. It doesn't have to be something that's super structured. I know that from a technical uh, audience, we generally have a lot of that, but just, just get together, be casual, and see what comes of it. You know, much like camp, I think we see a lot of really cool stuff comes out of the informal space that we allow for. So then how else can we go out doing this? Seeking support, right? I love this quote, have you guys heard this? Uh, is, if you want to go fast, you go alone. But if you really want to go far, if we really want to see these like dreams of a distributed web come together, you, you gotta go together, right? So uh, seek others in the community to support you as an organizer. If you're gonna do this thing, try to find some cohorts, right? Try and find people who want to support you, whether it's in the logistics, or even emotional support is good to have too. 
right? And uh, organizers and allies, because as things grow, you're going to want to help delegate some of this stuff around. So, uh, and then I think that it's really important when you're thinking about meetups and events in general, um, is keeping a regular and appropriate, especially for you as an individual, cadence, right? So things that happen pretty regularly and people can come, kind of come to expect, like whatever this event is that you have but a recurring sense, right? Um, so what I think this really uh, gets down to is what I see from community building is you get some trust and belonging really that come from this cadence that you develop and then this familiarity and this comfort, right? People start to know each other. And then what it ultimately comes to is, I think the kicker is this loyalty, right? And this is what we see in like open source in general as well, is that once you've bought into the people, like the ideas and the technology is cool, but getting around cool people like we are here, um, that's what makes you stick. That's the sticking force. So that's why I'm really excited about building these communities because it enables us to go through the hard times together. Right, uh, and then I think that one thing, especially in the online world, right, is keeping yourself available uh, as this organizer, this leader online, and it, regularly accessible, right? Be active, right? That's, I think, the most important thing that we see is that if you're just present as an organizer, as a leader, um, that, that's, that's what helps everyone develop all these things. So uh, really then, to get a community off the ground, um, you've got to do stuff that's hard, right? And the, I, I like this example. If you, if you want 100 people to come to your event, and uh, you really got to do the work personally, getting in there and emailing the 200 people, you get a lot of failures here, right? And one thing you'll have to, as a community organizer, get used to is that sense, you know, that you'll try and you'll try and you'll try, and not everything will work, but it's okay. It's building towards something. So there's a lot of sweat that goes into this, but. Uh, in the end, I think it's, it's so valuable because what you get out of this is um, a way to galvanize people's attention, which I think is one of the most valuable commodities that we all have, right? To use it to fuel this dream that we all can work on together. So, so that's it. Let's go team. So with that, kind of gives you a sense of what uh, organization might be and why you might want to lead some of the communities that are here. I think that we can talk about this new tool, which I think Kevin can uh, switch over and talk a little bit more about. Hi everyone, I'm Kevin. Uh, I personally uh, organize uh, the Hong Kong, uh, Hong Kong IBFS community in Hong Kong, and then uh, later on we uh, uh, organize the actually we have the local chapters organized for the public school as well, and. Uh, in these few days, I went into a lot of you know developers here, and then people like Mustafa from Turkey, and then uh, Jerome from France, and they were talking to us like they want to actually uh, start their local community, IPFS community, but they, they just don't know where to where to start, how to start. I think uh, Polo School can be the uh, uh, like really good idea for you to start your community. Uh, so, uh, what is Polo School? Uh, <laughs> so what is Polo School? Polo School is an educational community uh, talking about the uh, decentralized web protocol and uh, they have all the uh, online tutorials, all the resources there, you can go through the tutorials and then they have, you, you, if you are the, one of the organizers in your city, then you will be the one to organize the event and then uh, maybe the mentor as well and then you look for more and more mentors to organize the technical events and then share with everyone doing the tutorials. And uh, anyone went go to photo school? Uh, it's at photo school, right? Right. Okay. Uh, so there are a lot of uh, online tutorials there. There are many uh, about uh, IPFS now, but they will uh, have more content like this kind of day at uh, MPF, uh, MPF as the newest content there. And then they will have more and more talking about deep to b And then you can even build your own tutorial there. And then just uh, go on there and check it out. And if you organize uh, Polo School together with, uh, either you can order, organize Polo School or you can organize IPFS community together, you can use it as a community hub in your city. You will 
learn and grow your community bigger and bigger and support each, each other. Because like uh, Mustafa talking to me like, oh, uh, or Jerome talking to me, I, when I talk to the people in my city about IPFS, they're like, what is that? <laughs> Seriously, like, like I, I had that feeling one year ago in my, in my city as well. So I just, uh, uh, Stefan gave me, gave me a very good advice. Just go, just do it. Don't think anything. Don't think of like, just go do it. Yeah. And then it will be the first first advice. Just do it. And then you will uh, do it step by step and then with all the information here. And then uh, we are happy that uh, uh, Porto Grab invited us to do this event and then just help everyone to grow their community in their city. So you can interact with people online like us. We actually met each other like half a year ago online. And then now we see each other in person. That's how we do it, our community, like worldwide, not only in our city. So, and the inspiration uh, by the Porto School uh, is by uh, is, uh, the Law School. And then uh, if anyone have checked out the Law School before, and then it's actually, Law School is a very successful successful uh, uh, project for worldwide uh, for many years already. Yeah. So, so talking about the uh, global development of the Porto School. So Dan was the, uh, first gentleman to start the event in Denver and then he had the, uh, uh, some uh, developers came and then they, they actually went through the uh, chapters, the tutorial together and then uh, did you actually get a mentor here? Did you mentors? actually get a mentor? Mentor. mentor. A mentor? Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I got to mentor through some of these. It was yeah. fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's the first event and then uh, be the Denver chapter and then the next one uh, it is a Seattle chapter in 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 the in I think they had their uh, events in uh, May in May and then they had a lot of feedback as well and then they did go through all the uh, uh, tutorials here in the states and then we get the next chapter will be Munich Munich uh, is held by uh, Stefan Stefan doing a lot of work as well he he actually created some of his content as well so. You can go to the, to the Munich chapter and check out. You can actually it's all all open and share to everyone. Yeah. So if you don't know where how to start and where, where to start, you can go check it out there. So uh, that's from the Europe side, Munich, and then it's from the Hong Kong chapter, which I personally host the event there. Uh, I did whole introduce the old school to the uh, community first, and then I actually went into university doing some uh, IPFS workshop 101. Like those students, they have no they have no background, or no technical background, but they are having the uh, blockchain course. They want to learn more about this. And then, so we kind of like uh, make it like very fundamental for them, the uh, 101 workshop for them. I think, I think uh, we had a really good feedback from the, from the university. I mean, that, that may be another good place for you to start as well. Yeah. So uh, uh, Hong Kong, and then uh, I actually, uh, this because Hong Kong, uh, the next chapter will be Shenzhen. Shenzhen, uh, because Hong Kong is right next to Shenzhen, and then when I organize IPFS event in Hong Kong, a lot of people coming from Shenzhen, and then they are like asking for like, do they have a polo school event here? And then and then we actually uh, organize the uh, polo school event there as well. And then and then Shanghai was the other one in China. Shanghai, and then uh, uh, I think the Shanghai organizer is here, is here, but he's not in the room. Yeah, he's in. In the camp as well, so uh, so they're growing, growing more and more chapters in in in, in, in global globally, and uh, and the next chapter will be the uh, Taipei, the next one, the Taipei. You see, I'm there as well, right? <laughs> but yeah. actually, I'm not I'm not the organizer, yeah. but uh, how uh, Taipei they organize their uh 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 polo school chapter. I met a guy from Taiwan in Hong Kong in some kind of event, and then we talk about IPFS. We talk about Polo School, and then he was interested in uh, organizing this. And then I was just like, okay, uh, he just don't know where to start. I could just go there, and check, check it out, and can come and to like join you as a guest. I just give him everything, like if you need help, and then uh, you can. And then actually, I think the Taipei. Uh, the events uh, was even better than the, those I organized in my own city because like uh, those people are coming for the events they are all developers they're asking very very uh, uh, quality have high quality questions and then they are very interested in IPFS and the and the decentralized uh, 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 protocol that's yeah 
So um, then those are, I think those are, that's all about the GoPro department in, 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 in for Photo School. Okay. So, so uh, let's talk about how, how do you initiate Photo School, uh, your local Photo School chapters. Uh, you can go to either the website, the, chap the website they have a, uh, you have, can see all the links, guide you through there, okay? or just go to the Photo School GitHub. So you have to do, go to the Photo School GitHub anyways, like for that, as long as for you to open a uh, new chapter, uh, send a request, and then and then uh, Terry will uh, deal with the, uh, the, the rest with you. Yeah. <laughs> and then how do you actually bring your Photo School into your local community? Let's say uh, for us, we don't. We I I had a I have one I have one uh, uh, IPFS community. It's easier for me to bring photo school into the IPFS community. But if your if your city you don't have like anything related to IPFS, I think the first thing you can like approach like any blockchain community or any technical community like like Nettles community. Then you can like ask it for more help from them uh, rather than just working on your own. Then I think it will help you much better. Or if you if your local city already have a IPFS community, then uh, you can I think you can go to meetup.com or go to uh, you just search IPFS community. You can see all the cities worldwide, worldwide like how many IPFS community all over the world. Yeah. So, so and I was talking about you can create your own uh, photo school tutorial. So uh, there are some t uh, online tutorials there already. But if you have an idea for new tutorial, then you can just uh, go to uh, the GitHub and then submit submit a, a request and then see if you can you have all the work you have done and then just submit there and then and, and then uh, I think the team will take a note and then they will uh, go through the rest for with you. So uh, see if there are any similar one there. If there are no, then you can submit your new one. So. Here, how actually how do we run the community? Uh, I think you need a lot of uh, uh, help, like with uh, doing the white thing on the white chat, right? And then you have to do some social media. You need social media to help you to promote. So uh, uh, the first thing, of course, the Polo School website, and then the other one is the uh, IPFS GitHub. IPFS GitHub. If you have event on. Uh, 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 doing some IPFS event or photo school event, and then you go to the GitHub submit a uh, 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 issue, and then they will, they will, uh, I think they will post it on the uh, new sector, or uh, and I mean at least the uh, official they will like have some uh, collaboration with you, and then you need to have uh, photo, you need to know the photo school chapter, uh, photo school chapter Twitter, photo school apps Twitter. And then I think those are those social media that for you to attract people, for you to attract even more people, uh, to come to your 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 meetup, your your your, your uh, event. So I think that's it for me. Is it for me? Oh yeah. And now we're going to actually want a very uh, quick uh, tutorial. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah, we can show you how we run the workshop. Like uh, the best, I think, is to have to have a pilot and co-pilot. One doing the talking, one do the talking, and the other one do the coding. And then let's, uh, you don't necessarily need the computer. We just show you, and then you can like see how how it how it will go. Oh man, you picked the hardest one. Look at you. This is so hard. No. Plus is so, seven. Right. Is it, is it hard as well? No, I didn't mean to have this one. Okay. Is it two, only one nine? No, less than one is fine. Yeah. <laughs> Don't scare me. <laughs> no, because I, 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 I didn't pick this one. No, no, I picked this one. Is it the one? Yeah. Okay. So, well, and this is the beauty of these tutorials, is we're able to, basically, it's a, it's a walkthrough, right? And here, we're looking at, you know, how do you link to, uh, in fact, no, this is not the one I wanted to write. Yeah. I want to go, one. not to blog, but in tutorials, down, it is uh, number one, blogging, yeah. not blogging. Content, yes, content addressing. Here we go. Yeah, this one. This is some of the basics, right? So the, as you saw briefly there in the tutorials, maybe we can go back, there really are in a small but growing uh, set of lessons in each one of these different topics. 
And um, it's really, I guess, uh, as, as uh, Kevin was alluding to, we're soliciting for more people to idea, uh, give us ideas and also contribute to, you built some beautiful tools, Terry and team, um, to help you actually put in something like you're about to see these, uh, these tutorials here for us. So with that, yeah, here's number one. So Mr. Pilot, tell me what I'm doing. Okay, so uh, in this tutorial, we will be uh, uh, exploring the IPFS DAB, DAG API. So uh, now uh, uh, we are talking about a, a CID is an address for the bulk of data in IPFS. So this will divide uh, from this content. So everyone, everyone, every time everyone put on the same like hello world in, into the IPFS, you will get back an identical CID. So and then. If they put in like hello, it's not hello, it's hello zero, well, and then instead the CID will be different. So now then we'll show you uh, how how uh, uh, IPFS dot that dot put uh, will you get. So here in the tutorial, we're able to see I put in something I want to test it, I want to submit it. Well, it's oh I forgot to return the result. Oh, yeah, you so can see oh, right. Wait, 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 the interaction. So okay. I gotta. This is a fun job as you build right. tutorials is to predict everything people are going to do wrong and write yes. error messages for all of the most common things. Right. So, Kevin, what am I doing here? So, uh, now uh, then just forgot to return the result. Yeah. So, now I have to return out. Oh, I was expecting something different, yeah? Yes. Because I need to read the instruction. Right. But so the beauty of this tool is that I'm able to be prompted and pushed right in the right direction, very much like uh, some of the node school tutorials. So test the value one. Right. Cool. And hey, I got it. Okay, it yeah. works. So you can see your result here. Mm -hmm. It works, and then you can even view it in the uh, IPLD. Yep. The other thing is, if you get stuck. Right, you're able to interactively look at answers, and uh, it'll give you a sense of what you might be doing wrong without overriding your work. So it's it's a very powerful tool to do some of these tutorials, as well as then you uh, come away with a little check mark badge that says yes, I <coughs> I achieved. Uh, I was like trying to ex experiment with this tool, and when you submit the correct answer, you can keep working on it anymore. Like. Yeah. You're stuck in there, and I got to clear my cache to show something. So, so what you, yeah, if yeah, you go back into one of those lessons, so scroll down a little. If you click reset code, it's also going to reset your yeah. status. So it's going to take you back to having it look like you've never started. Yeah. Uh, so I it might be a much. good UX to say <laughs> start over as opposed to reset. Yeah. Well, that would work too, but uh, <laughs> maybe. Ability, ability to continue where you left off would be nice too. Mm. Do you mean you already s submitted and it passed? So it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And yeah, I want to show, like, if I change this one to zero, what would happen with the other settings before? Mm. Yeah. 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 Uh, that's the kind of thing that you can log an issue about in the in the repo that makes up that website and make suggestions for UX, feel free to put that in with like an, an example of the kind of thing you were trying to do and what's the other UX that you would have enjoyed seeing. There's been a lot of work for UX yeah. to be work on. So yes, please yeah. <laughs> help us make this thing better so yeah. we can all use it to help fuel like the uh, the meetups that we're, we all want to see mm -hmm. back in our own uh, local communities. So with that, Let's do some uh, pro tip design, right? So I think that before we dive into it, I think I gave you the seed before. Has anyone thought of any ideas uh, about like what was the key indicators for the things that you found valuable at meetups? Like the one thing it was this was really good and why I thought it was a one. Yeah, has anyone got those? I see a few maybe around. But uh, Stefan, I think we'll go around and uh, grab some of these and 
uh, till when you so come back to have something for me? Uh, yeah. yes. but, so the question is what we... What do you I think is the one or maybe two like most important and valuable things at a meetup? Like, what shines to you? It's like, this was the thing that made it work. Yeah. Should we have something? Huh? Stefan, who's going to put him in the back and more on so, but from our experience, right, what do we know from doing these things a lot, right? I, I do meet up a few times a week, so I want to arm you guys with some powerful things to think about when you're trying to build your community. So, in particular, I think that uh, when we see, maybe even at the camp a little bit, is uh, trying to hit maybe too many different people in too many broad areas at the same time. I find workshops in particular, are you got to hone in. You got to say, this is for this kind of group, very beginner, very intermediate, very whatever it is on this topic, and make it loud and clear to everybody who's attending that that's exactly what it's for. So, because if you try and make it for everybody, unless that's your intention, it's just be a broad scope, right? Um, it, it, it tends to lose a lot of people in the weeds. So, target, go for it, and uh, and be loud about letting people know, and then. Uh, so when we're thinking about doing work to get the steps set up, right, you want to enable people with some of the topics already to see their ideas, to see uh, some of the stuff, the knowledge base that they need to succeed at this. This is a way also to kind of self-feed uh, self the right kind of people into whatever you're targeting uh, your audience for. And then I think that when you're designing whatever your workshop is, Try and as much as possible make it an all-in-one package. So if you do some pre some pre work, right, that's fine. But whatever the thing is you're doing at this event, just stand alone all on its own, and then enable you to go to whatever this next step is. If it is kind of loose on both ends, then you tend to lose a lot of value. So you want to make sure you're um, aiming for that. And then, so when we're thinking about, sorry. Uh, there you go. Um, this prep work, whatever you're going to be designing, um, don't go and punish the people who actually did it. Because most people don't do it, but assume that they did. They didn't do all that well, but they kind of did it somewhat. So refresh, but don't rehash any of this pre-work. Again, it's the expectation to kind of like say, we, we gave you something to think about, and uh, if you didn't, okay, we're going to move on, right? When you're thinking about also designing this content, this all-in-one package, as much as possible, try and think of it to make it viral. So this is one of the beauties of um, Proto School is that uh, these can be reused, repackaged, and pushed out all alone uh, without you having to organize and run it every time. Yeah. 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 Don't punish the people who didn't do the prep work or who did the prep work. Who who did the prep work? So the people who did the prep work, if I see a lot of meetups that I'll, I'll go to and they say, we, we said you should do this thing, right? Yeah. And nobody did it. Okay, let's do it together right now kind of stuff. So everybody who actually, oh, okay. right, right, if they come and you, it's, yeah, it's a waste of their time. The yeah. right. <laughs> right, so don't waste people's time who actually put in the effort beforehand. Yeah, just the refresher to get everybody who didn't on the same page, kind of, but but uh, that's, that's, at least that's what I, the philosophy I like. And then trying to make your, the workshop itself self-instructive, right? As a matter of fact, like what you'll see again in Proto School is that the, you can walk through it on your own, you don't need a leader. And whatever your workshop is, designing it such that uh, it, somebody can watch it and potentially get some resources off out of band from you to do it themselves, right? So they can port it, they, they can expand it. And then uh, one thing that we, we see a lot of um, is asynchronous points. So like if I'm giving a technical talk, right, and uh, we see this in some of the demos, where I'm working through something, and then we get to a point where we'd like everyone to come to. So if I need you to achieve some task, like get this app running, right, set up this thing, um, there's a lot of waiting involved, right? It's like try as much as you can to avoid these asynchronous points in class. Right, so you're trying to move through a flow in whatever your event is, and when you do hit these asynchronous points, maybe this is a time to actually move to the next thing. So like uh, in Proto School, we have lessons that are all stepwise pieced out, 
So they stand alone, and that is the point at which you can break away and go and like learn some more if you need to get uh, prepped for whatever step two is. So I think that that's going to help us. Right. Uh, so as, as we uh, illustrated just a moment ago, right, having a, 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 a pilot and a co-pilot right, can be a really powerful tool here. And especially if you're doing live coding, um, somebody can actually be going through and progressing through the workshop as opposed to speaking through what they're doing at the same time. If this is well orchestrated, um, it's, it's a very good flow that really, again, it you, helps you avoid some of this asynchronous stuff. It's because you don't have to wait on everybody coming to the same page. You as a presenter just have to wait on your co-pilot coming to the same page as you. So this is a powerful tool to help really engage people and keep everybody on the same page. All right. And then um, one thing that I think that uh, Proto, Proto School, uh, excuse me, no, Pro, Protocol Labs did really well is giving us a checklist, right? Um, which uh, I can point you to these slides afterwards to go more through in particular about how do you actually get ready for one of these workshops and thinking about like all the caveats. Really, the, the key takeaway here is think about what could possibly go wrong. Assume everything is going to go wrong and, and plan for it, right? Right. Um, if if everything does go wrong, you'll have you'll have that available for you. So, with that, I think we want to turn it over to a fun activity. So, um, we very much like with some of the things we talked about, some of these topics, right? And thinking about some of these uh, these things that we brought together. And Stefan, I think you can go over so, in particular. <coughs> some of the I, I would like to say something about my personal experience. Is that sure. okay? Because um, what what is very important my perspective is your own motivation so kind of do what you like so for instance I um, make my own exercises with command line IPFS and tried it out myself on localhost with localhost and then of course that's much uh, more fun if you have some people in the workshop and they try it then from laptop to laptop so and so I did not follow the proto school idea I did my own and it's just because your motivation because at the end it's about you that you're motivated to do it and then you can motivate other people and then you can have a community and then you get dynamic so that's my experience yeah. and I like it and now I think we go here and have some ideas from the people um, meetup hosts being approachable um, so about the hosting I'll say support, probably. How do you find a host? Sorry? Are you uh, mean you, venue you, you host? When you need to place. Yeah. yeah. So, um, ideally, from my perspective, it was about meetup.com, which is quite a big thing in Munich. So, if you have been on some venues, you just ask them. And mostly they say, yeah, why not? So, that was not a problem. I don't know. If you have some other experiences, but I guess sure, yeah, it's, it is a, it's it's a big thing normally. Mm -hmm. There's a large swath of tools. One yeah. thing I did glaze over in here is that the planning and management of the community and events within it can be a lot. There's a lot of things and moving parts to think about. But more than anything, that's why we're here. This uh, organizer community of organizers. Come and talk to us. We'd love to help you and get you on board to the right kind of stuff. Um, but I think this might be a great transition into like this activity we'd really like to do with you. So it's thinking about this first meetup, right? So we planned, let's assume that nobody's <coughs> in the area, it's just you, you're going gung ho. But with that concept, it's like, I want to start a community and see that what's your first meetup going to look like, right? And uh, with that, in mind, I think we have an interesting aspect to thinking about uh, if everything can go wrong, there's at least one thing that's gonna go wrong during this event. So let's have you prep in what you think would be this ideal first thing with this caveat, right? And uh, I think here, keep these, these ideas in mind. So Kevin, I think you wanna pass around the, uh, yeah, on this, do uh, you want to like, just the effect when you want up here, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Be like so we want to be in groups of roughly five. Both the five tables? Yeah, yeah. Four one tables, two. right? So we can consolidate a few. If you'd be in front of this table. Yeah, and you do need to pay for more. 
<laughs> okay, so we uh, we thought that we would take advantage of an existing developer group and we'd go in and do a talk at the Python meetup, uh, so that we have like a built-in community already there that's pretty open to these kinds of ideas already. Um, and then try to get people not only interested in IPFS, but distributed systems and the distributed web. Um, and then we wouldn't, we, since that we're going into an existing meetup, we don't need to plan for a venue, we can just use their venue. And the outcome would be that we would show them how to host their blog on IPFS. And the takeaways would be to continue to um, study in how to use IPFS and point them at Proto School and how to join the IPFS meetup if we were going to start one um, independently. And um, they can sign up for the IPFS newsletter and things like that, other resources where they can continue their interests. Well, our our, yes, our, our sneak attack scenario was that your speaker or mentor can't make it to the event at the last minute, which in, <laughs> in this case is us that can't make yeah. it. So, so um, we had two ideas for that, I think. Um, one was if you, if, if in the case where you don't have like a backup person, your co-presenter, hopefully you have a co-presenter that you're, you want to go in with. Um, if that person can't make it or you don't have one, then um, maybe you can provide some resources uh, that, like a, a lesson plan or something, a guide that they can go through on their own without you, or hopefully you can do it remotely through Skype or something like that. Yeah, phone a friend. If you can't phone be there, <laughs> maybe somebody remote can come in. Yeah. As long as it, logistically it's possible. You yeah. Know, like yeah. we've got a, you know, a place that we can present on. It's a good tool. Yeah. And cool. Thank you, Marty. Um, we uh, somebody wanted to target, or sorry, we thought we would target a technical audience first, and we picked the uh, maybe local JavaScript communities because it's a, it's a large group, there's already existing uh, people, and there, there's, a, there's a chance that they're going to be interested in peer-to-peer -peer web. Um, what we proposed was actually an initial uh, informal meetup to try and get a gauge of with who the um, most interested people in the local community might be, uh, what sort of things that they're interested in, what, why, why, they, why they've come along so that we know what to target. Um, so we, uh, our, our suggestion was uh, going to existing uh, JS lists and trying to, to post there and any personal contacts of people who may, might be likely. Um, we proposed uh, just an informal meeting in somewhere like a cafe or a bar and maybe do a 10 minute introduction as to why you'd be interested in uh, any of these things, why, why you should be excited about it and then broadening it out to a, a more general discussion to try and get uh, if you're really interested in IPFS, if you're really interested in Scuttlebutt or uh, whatever it happens to be or particular use cases. Um, yeah, and I think that was that was our plan. And I think our uh, random disaster was having explicitly targeted really technical audience. Uh, half the people who turn up have no uh, technical background or, or a more general one. And that's a really tough one. I think our idea was if we're giving a, a informal high level talk, then at least that's, uh, that's giving uh, an overview, uh, which is hopefully useful to everyone. And then I think at that point you're facing whether you're wanting to, well, what happens in the next meetup? Are you continuing to focus on one community or is it because half the group in the first meeting you, you take in a different direction? And I think it would be better to be honest upfront as to which decision you're making and stick to it. And, by, and then saying, but, you know, it's brilliant for showing up, we love your enthusiasm. And uh, here are uh, resources or, or, or point you in the direction of things you may be more interested in. Or you may do that to the devs and decide that arguing about politics or playing Barcelona is more important. So. That's really good.
Something I I really like when presenters do it is to take a little poll at the beginning of their talk and do like, how many people feel like super comfortable with this topic already and you think they already know everything there is to know? Who's already his hands? Who's super new? Just get a sense for people's own and it could be who's really technical, who's, who's kind of works on the business side. So even if this is not the audience you intended, you like you're not going to revamp your whole presentation in the middle of it, but you can at least like throw in some translations into more friendly language in the middle or whatever. Just right. And I think you bring up a really good point: is that your community might not be what you think it is or want it to be, right? And maybe you aren't all that interested in whatever aspects of everybody else is, and that's okay. Like and you, you discover this and you evolve over time. And uh, follow your passions, because that's the only thing that's going to keep you in for the long game. You know? So if it's just not there, it's not the right time, that's okay. You know, And like you say, as steering and guiding people to other resources that you're aware of is good. And being honest about that you don't really care about mm -hmm. whatever it might be. Like, that's okay. Yeah, you, know, you still it created the intersection that other people who are uh, can come together and do that. So that's cool. Okay. Great. Let's go. Do you see it's very clear? All right. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna introduce the how to um, organize a meetup or activities, and uh, Stefan will talk about, the, about this scenario. Yeah. Great. Um, just define like we gonna organize IPFS activity or IPFS meetup in Europe, like in Berlin, and some very important point I had wrote down here, like. At first, um, who is our target? We should think about who is target. Like audience, we can say some audience have techn a technical background. They can coding. They understand the internet. They also understand the distributed web. And we can say also some audience don't understand technology, but they are more focused on the business. Like we can say uh, non non technic and. Uh, and how to uh, make advertisement or how to make how to organize some people? We can say we can organize some people from the university who study the computer science or IT, and we can say also company and some communities like um, we have many communities online and offline. And now um, we should choose one place to hold this kind of um, this kind of meetup. On place like we can say, but I found that if you you have many people from the university or company, you can also choose the university or company as your place, as your meetup place. We can also rent hotel, some conference room, and we should also think think about the food, some drink, something to drink, and most important for for the internet is we should have a oh, Wi-Fi, yeah. very fast Wi-Fi. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, and we can also think about the support sponsor. Who is sponsor? We can probably if we um, organize the IPFS activities, we can uh, write an email to the protocol lab. We're gonna spread your your ideas, and this is very valuable, very short <laughs> Everyone's staring at me. Yeah. <laughs> protocol lab. Yeah, I think you you you. Sport us, right? <laughs> <laughs> Great. Just, just sure. I'm not yeah. the right person to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> to <introduce him>. Yeah. <laughs> yes. All right. And the speaker. Speaker is very important. Um, at first, I, as my um, my appearance is that I attended the first um, IPFS uh, developer meetings in Berlin. Before I I was non programmer. I. I didn't do something calling, but after I attend your your um, developer meetings in Berlin, it was the first developer meeting, and I, it was so attractive your your culture and your idea what you want to do to replace HTTP protocol to um, interplanetary file system, and I think it's it is very very attractive. So. At first, I can. I think I can also act as a speaker in the in the in the meetup in in Europe or in Berlin, and we can also invite some people from Protocol Lab. Or it's, we have many ways to to deal with this kind of problem. All right, and keynote is also very important. What 
what we are going to talking about and um, yeah we have keynote keynote we can also um, organize a group activities and the right so feedback is also very important why the most important how to maintain the, this meetup how to do it regularly one month two months or uh, six months half a year and we should think about uh, feedback it's like we can get feedback online like on twitter or email or, or meetup on the web and also offline we're gonna meet if someone is really after attending this activity is really interested in the IFS technology, we can meet up regularly as a small group. So this is my idea. Okay. Yeah. So, and the scenario was uh, that uh, you messed the organization up and they have double as much people as you expected or as you can have in that uh, venue. Mm -hmm. And the idea from my experience is always that mostly in the companies and they have always pizza and beer and that's normally not where uh, the uh, talk is so then you say okay take half of the pizza away you get with one half have your pizza take your time let us do the other half our stuff and after half of the time we change it we bring the safe pizza again and so that would be the idea how we would try to, to solve that problem <laughs> Uh, let's say you have planned the events for like two hours or three hours, like if you separate into two groups, then <laughs> how can it, how do you <laughs> Because it's, it's yeah, yeah, okay. Because that scenario is real case, you know, Poker Dogs, Gavin, Gavin, he came, went to Hong Kong. Yeah, uh, for, for Mila, Gavin Good, he went to Hong Kong for Mila. And then there were like two organizers there, and then they individually okay. advertise and then in the community. And then I was there, and then, but they originally target for 50 people, but there were like 100 people there. So yeah, then, the venue couldn't, the venue couldn't like uh, yeah, have then. so many people there. So they stopped people for going in. So I think it's a very bad organizing. As an organizer, people, if I cannot get in this time, I won't come back. Like, <laughs> like if I'm the handy. So this will really happen to you poker dogs, like what they have been there. But they are not the one to organize it. They ask someone to help. So it's really, really <laughs> happening. And yeah. sorry to sort of throw this out there too, but I know that um, I was talking to you um, actually about, about kickback, right? If you guys know what kickback is, it's this idea that you bond some small amount of money yeah. to a meetup, but you get it back when you attend, but you lose like, let's say five dollars or something like that if you don't attend. And what do you say, if took, like the rates of meetup attendance or hackathon attendance from 50% to 93% <laughs> because of the, the yeah. bonding thing that you have a better idea ahead of time about, because yeah. it's always hard to tell. Yeah. What sort of discount, you know, yeah. the people that say they're going to go to what's actually going to happen. Yeah. So, from my experience, free events that are absolutely free, it's about 50%. Most of the time. Most of the time. Um, so, putting anything, though, and this is, this is something you have to think about. Literally, $1, right, is enough to push people away. They're like, eh, it's too hard, right? Um, and thinking about, even though it's just a dollar in your head, the friction of having to pay for it, right? Well, however, it's like I have to set up an account somewhere, or I got to actually bring you money. Like it's it's going to change the demographic quite a bit. So, um, but the skin in the game mechanism is really cool. The kickback is there. There's a really cool Ethereum specific Protea that's just coming out um, to try and get a better gauge. So tools are coming, I think, to help free-ish events. It still takes time and effort to do something. I guess I wasn't sort of suggesting that every single time you would do this, but with something like a high value or a high potential for like, there's way more interest there. I mean, that's your job as an organizer to kind of make a good judgment call there. I mean, if it's just you as the keynote speaker, I wouldn't, I wouldn't propose to use it, but yeah, something like that. And, and at the same time, it is okay to, to mix it up too. You can have a lot of free events, and then this is a highlight event, and just a little bit of friction, it's like, you know, it's five bucks to come or whatever, or it's 50 bucks to come. Of course, thinking about what you use those funds for, but just as a mechanism to be a, a, a cut, right? To just say we can only accommodate somebody. You know, how much? How much do you care about it? Basically, um, this is also a mechanism uh, I thought about in the cryptocurrency community. Is like I want to make it free, but I want to have this cut for people. Is mm -hmm. so it'll be fifty bucks or they come to an event, which you get fifty bucks in crypto back for that kind of thing. So it's like. 
if you do the, the efforts and all the friction and you're self-selecting someone and doing something like that. I just have a little suggestion, like if you're attending your first ever event, I suggest you do it free because like it's the first one, right? If you're charging people for the first one, then mm -hmm. then, the, then you won't have your second one. Mm -hmm. I mean like, yeah, yeah. I'd also really recommend that if you ever lead a, a paid event that you offer scholarships, like have a way as people are applying to come that they can request a scholarship so that you're not unintentionally excluding a segment of your potential audience. A lot of times the people who are having those financial troubles are the people who are already not represented enough in the room right. in tech. And like, so if it is a, a higher amount of value, uh, putting a slight premium even on that to fund those scholarships, right? Because you know, are you covering costs with that or are sponsors covering costs with that? Like uh, who's, who's actually paying for the thing? And if you can get it such that it's just a friction mechanism to try and sell, uh, select people, then yeah, all those funds can be used directly to let others come, you know? So if, if you go into enough effort to ask nicely, that's, you know, might do what you want. This is a crazy idea, but did people know about pool together? It's a no loss lottery, it's essentially yeah. like kickback, mm -hmm. but then the interest, so it's locked up for like 30 days and it generates some amount of interest sitting there and then that interest is a lottery and that can go to like scholarships potentially. Mm -hmm. So that way everybody, it's free for everybody to come, you have the friction to show that they're interested and then you can fund people out of that as well without even charging anybody in the first place. So what, what they're doing in Munich is that uh, they announce the event, but in let's say, 10 days, you will have you, you can register then. So if you're not interested, you will forget it. If you're interested, you, oh, I have to. Huh? And then that's what some meetups are doing. Yeah, I think we are putting out time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so thank you. Thank you. If you guys have any questions.